Okay, it's time to get started. So, um, welcome everybody. Let me just go through and uh, make sure I know who's here. Um, we have Sylvia in Gustavus. We have uh, Libby in Hyder. Okay. Um, and in Glen Allen, is that, that you're a long ways away? Is that you, Sharon? Um, but Alan, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, and we have Kodiak. Who is with us in Kodiak? I mean, your mic may be muted because I can't hear you. Hi, Shane. Did you need me? Yeah, hi, Sharon. Uh, okay, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure we had somebody there from Glen Allen. Who who was there today? Um, we had um, four, three, one, two, three, four volunteer librarians here today. All right, great. Yeah, well, wow. but they went away. <laughs> oh, they went away. Yeah, because yeah. we couldn't get connected. Oh, so um. Are they back, or what do you want to do? Well, is this the confidentiality one? No. This is the All Things Owl meeting. Oh, I didn't know we were signed up for that. Yes, you were on my list. Do you want to stay uh, for it? Yeah, no, it's yeah. just me. And I just um, did a tour with the homeschooling... Um, people here and uh, a parent so I'm good with all that is owl <laughs> all right well then we will drop you off the call and um, okay move to somebody else thanks Sharon okay okay see you bye unless you two wanted to you know no, thanks <laughs> I think we're good <laughs> so they didn't do the confidentiality can you drop, no, or, uh, Matt, can, can you drop Glenn Allen please And um, who was it? I'm sorry. Who, who did we have with us in Kodiak? Uh, Ellie Murphy and Molly McIntosh. Okay, and Ellie, and you, you're on your way up here next week, correct? That's correct, yeah. All right. Um, and in, who else do we have? Gus Davis, um, Dillingham, is that it? Okay, and who's with us in Dillingham today? Sonia, Christopher, and Teresa. Okay, good. Um, and one more down at the bottom. Who's that in the big room down there? Uh, I'm from Kenai. My name's Rayanna. Oh, okay. Kenai. Yeah. All right, well, this is good because, you know, coming into this and seeing the sites that had... <clears throat> sign up for this, um, I, I really was, I, I kind of prepared two things to do today. Uh, one was um, just review what we had done at the Sustainability Summit a few weeks ago that just goes over the whole project, exactly what it is and some of the objectives of the project and really give an update on where we're at with the project. And the other thing I'd done was prepared some of things that happened after the sustainability conference and where we plan to go from here. Um, but with, with the group we have here, I, I'm glad that, um, that uh, I can go back to the first one and just give an overview of the project and try to cover all aspects of what we're doing and answer questions and just sort of review um, what we went over at the Sustainability Summit as far as what the OWL project is and everything involved with it. So I'm glad most of you are new, your library age, your volunteer librarians, that kind of thing. So um, a lot of this is new to you. Uh, for some of you who have been with us for a while, a lot of this will just be review, but there's nothing wrong with repetition. So um, as 
as I go through this, if you have any questions, just uh, open up your mic and uh, jump right in, and, and uh, we can get a conversation going that way. Um, if you're not speaking, uh, please just have your mic muted um, so we don't pick up all of the other noise in the room. And like I say, if you have any questions, just open it up and uh, say, excuse me, Shane, or whatever the case may be. So uh, to start with, since I don't know uh, a few of you here, my name is Shane Southwick. I am uh, the OWL project manager, and <clears throat> I've been with the State Library uh, since uh, March of last year, so uh, about a year and a half since the OWL project really got started. Um, I, I hopped on board and, and have been uh, trying to lead this project uh, since then. And um, you know, I, as we've done that, I've got to know many librarians and many people around the state. So. It's nice to have sort of a new crowd uh, here today that I don't know. So um, I will go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna put up some PowerPoint slides, and you know part of this uh, you, you'll see I'll, and I'll give it time to refresh, but they they may load slowly um, because we have a number of sites on board with this, but. I'll go through this slow, and again, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Okay, Sue is not with us today. She is out of state, but this is the same, the same PowerPoint presentation that we did at the Sustainability Summit uh, a few weeks ago. A few things have changed. Uh, that's why it says September 20th is because that's when we did it. A few things have changed, uh, and I'll talk about those as we get to them. Okay. Um, but what we are uh, is a project that is funded. Our project sponsors are the United States Department of Commerce, the, the BTOP, which stands for Broadband Technology Opportunities Program. Um, that's the, the bulk of our funding came from the, the BTOP program, and that's $5.3 million. We've also received $1.6 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, locally the Rasmussen, Rasmussen Foundation, and the Alaska State Library have uh, kicked in $250,000 of uh, match money for that. So um, total, the, the grant is $8.25 million. And our, our targets for this, this grant is, you know, four, four things that we, we had in mind. One is that we wanted every public library in the state to have high-speed broadband. In order for us to do that, we had to upgrade broadband in 67 libraries that didn't have high-speed broadband. They may have had dial-up or some lower speeds, but they didn't have what were considered high-speed broadband. So we identified 67 libraries and uh, that needed a broadband upgrade. Okay. Uh, we also are in the process of putting video conferencing in 90, all 97 public libraries in the state of Alaska. Now the, nine, the number 97 has gone up, it's gone down, um, because we have, some libraries drop out, uh, some libraries don't do their necessary paperwork, so as of right now it's 97. Okay. Um, and as many of you, or all of you, I think, have, have already received uh, public access uh, computing equipment. That's new computers, new laptops, new printers, uh, new desktop computers uh, for your library. You know, we want state-of-the-art computing equipment in the libraries to go along with a high-speed broadband. And then, um, you know, with this new equipment, the new uh, computer equipment, the new video conferencing equipment. You know, we thought it was important that we um, train people in the libraries on how to use this and how it works and how to, uh, to troubleshoot some basic IT issues. So um, that last bullet, uh, training for all um, hired ITH for libraries open less than 20 hours a week, we've changed that now so any library in the project is eligible to have and to hire an ITA. They do not have to be open less than 20 hours any longer. We have enough funding left that we thought we would open that to everybody. So 
Um, if you don't have an aid working out of your library and you would like one, just let me know and uh, we can uh, process the paperwork to get uh, an aid hired out of your library. And, and an aid works uh, a maximum of seven hours per week and uh, usually the wage is somewhere around $20 an hour for those seven hours a week. So uh, we want every library to have an aid available to help patrons to help troubleshoot problems and we will do all of the training for that for that library aid. Okay. Um, our project covers the entire state all the way from Barrow down to Ketchikan and Hyder and all of those places in southeast. Um, I say there's 97 libraries uh, highlighted in this map by the red dot. And you can see that you know we're all familiar with Alaska. We know the the terrain, we know the, the problem with getting out to some of these more rural locations with broadband and the challenges being off a road system and only access by airplane or boat or whatever the case may be. So it's been a, you know, it's been a challenging project to this point, uh, but we're right on target with where we need to be. Um, so when we talk about high-speed broadband, what, what is broadband? Hey, the U.S. Department of Commerce defines broadband as 786 kilobits download speed and 200 upload speed. That wasn't good enough for us. That wasn't good enough for uh, what we were trying to do. And so we wanted to um, upgrade everybody to 1.5 megabits, so about twice as fast on download and um, upload about five times as fast. That's what the Department of Commerce said. So we want everybody, and what we're doing is putting 1.5 megabits of download and upload into all the libraries. Okay. Um, you know, we, we would like to, to be able to do what the National Broadband Plan says of one gig, which is awesome, uh, but we just don't have that in place yet. But we're working towards putting that in place, but that's going to be a ways down the road. And broadband is defined as a fast connection to the internet that is always on. It allows you to send emails, surf the web, download images and music, watch videos, join a web conference and much, much more and to do that uh, quickly so you don't have to sit and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. So um, that's the, the definition of broadband. Okay. Um, the cost to put high-speed broadband throughout the state of Alaska is very, very, very expensive. Okay. Fortunately, we have a program called E-Rate. And um, does anybody know out there what E-Rate is? Any? Oh, what is going on here? Um, any idea what E-Rate is? Hi, this is Elliot. Yeah, Shall we talk in turns here? Yeah, was that you, Ellie? You go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's a subsidized program for the federal government where we're taxed on our telephone bills, and okay. we get a discount rate through libraries and educational facilities. Okay. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, th that's right. And depending on, you know, it, it's a federal program. It's it comes out of everybody across the nation, out of their phone bill, and depending on where you live. Your community will either get 70% up to 90%, some 60%, uh, but generally in Alaska, it's 70 to 90%. Um, and so if your if your broadband bill or your internet bill is, you know, for example, thousand dollars a month, and your community is getting 80% E-rate, then you would only have to pay uh, $20 of that bill and the federal E-rate money would, would pay the rest. So it, it's a great program. It covers, you know, in Alaska in 2013, for fiscal year 2013, which started in last July, um, Alaska is going to receive $2.9 million in E-rate money, specifically targeted for broadband, high-speed broadband. Okay. 
Um, and that means that local contribution from the libraries as well as from the OUT project um, is about $800,000 to cover the whole state uh, in broadband with all the libraries for 2013. Okay. Um, yeah, whoops, we want... And do you all do you all see me or do you see the computer? We just see you. Now. We just see you. We see okay. you. Okay, so we're going to switch back to the computer. There we go. And so um, you can see from that slide that $800,000 a year is what we need to keep high-speed broadband throughout the state of Alaska as long as E-rate stays the way it is. They, our progress to date, or our progress as of September 19th, so about three weeks ago, um, out of the 67 public libraries, we had 53 of them done. Now we have 60 of them done. So we've added seven more libraries in the last three weeks. So that is now upwards of 85 to 87% where we've completed the broadband upgrades throughout the state. And I know Hyder got, got one. Uh, uh, Kodiak got an upgrade. Um, Glen Allen got an upgrade. Uh, Gustavus got upgraded. I think everybody on here is part of those 67 libraries that got increased broadband. Did you get it in Dillingham, Sonia? Did GCI come in and do a broadband upgrade there? Sorry. What was that? So in Dillingham, GCI did come into there and upgrade your broadband speeds in your library. That's right. They upgraded last, I think, November, a year ago almost. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Dillingham was one of the first libraries to get this, and um, since then we have, I say we, we had a target of 67, and now we have, I think, 61 or 62 done, depending on what they finish today. So we are, we are cruising right along with that, and, um, and our, with our broadband and our, our grant rules with the Department of Commerce um, and the equipment, we couldn't put computer equipment or video conferencing equipment into a library until they had upgraded broadband. So they had to have the, the high-speed broadband in the library before we could do equipment. So um, as of uh, September 20th, we had put equipment, uh, that's computer equipment and laptops and printers and routers and all that stuff in about 80% of the public libraries around the state. Now that's probably up to 85 to 89 uh, percent since uh, September 20th. Uh, we're about half done with our video conferencing network. Uh, that's a little more difficult because the, of the shipping of those. I mean, a lot of locations are getting big 60-inch monitors, and some of them, you know, to, to ship stuff out to rural Alaska of that size, it's logistically a little challenging. So. Um, you know, we're at 50% with our video conferencing libraries, and uh, we s expect to have all 97 libraries on with video conferencing by the end of November, first part of December of this year. So we have either ordered or configured, or in the process of configuring uh, video conferencing for all libraries, with the exception of five libraries in the Matsu Borough. So everything is moving forward very rapidly in that area. And uh, like I said, this slide shows 25% of the libraries hiring internet technology aids. And since we only had 25%, you know, we, we made the change to give all libraries the opportunity to hire an aid. And are any of you hired as an aid in your library? Uh, Christopher, are you in Dillingham? You, you were hired, right? Yes. Hey, Libby, are you, are you working as an IT aide out of Hyder? Yes, I am. Hey, and did, did um, Ellie and Kodiak, I know that we had talked down there with Kodiak, but did Kodiak decide to hire an aide? Uh, not that I know of. 
Okay. So maybe uh, when you're up here next week, we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, but since we, you know, it's hard for me to keep track. Since we like opened the door to everybody for this, you know, we, we've been, you know, money's been flying out the door to hire these aides. We want them on as quickly as we can, so uh, we can pay them from now until uh, June 30th of next year. So we, we want as much work out of them as we can possibly get. So, and then we, we've trained uh, about 70% of our libraries, and we are having a training next week. Uh, another training here, I believe, I know Chris, you've been, um, Libby, you've been, um, but we can, we're having our final one here in the office next week. And after that's done, we should have, we'll be up around 100% of all libraries trained with the equipment and video conferencing. So you can see that we are making lots and lots of progress with this. Uh, and just sort of so you know, the grant, the grant ends, the grant money ends um, on August 31st of 2013. So we have uh, just about a year, just less than a year left of this money. It's sort of our slogan for this project has been for each community its own solution because every, we're finding out that each community is different. It has different needs and, you know, um, Hyder has been one of the challenging ones just simply because of the location of Hyder. Um, and, and Libby, can you, I mean, it was, it was really kind of a, kind of a cool story. Um, probably about two months ago or three months ago, Libby, you sent me that, that story about that search and rescue in Hyder. Can you tell us about that? In the end of June, we, we have a, a resident that's been living here for about a year and a half, and she has built a, um, I can't, a, a tent, and she has it out on the salt flats. And what she's done for the last year and a half, she brings rocks in and puts it on the, um, out in the river, and it's built it up. And it's, like, built up about eight feet. And it's near our dike, and our dike is... Um, not in good order, and we've been afraid that when the yup clubs comes that it's going to de destroy the the dike. Anyway, she decided that she was going to cross the river and hike up a mountain uh, and and do her own thing for a while. And she tried to cross the river three or four times and wasn't successful. And at the end of June, she was successful, and she crossed the river, and then no one heard from her. So some of her friends uh, called the um, state trooper, and they ended up coming out here and searching uh, uh, Ketchikan Volunteer Search and Rescue. We're here for about four or five days with helicopters and dogs and people going across the river and trying to find her tracks. And they did find some tracks, but they unfortunately never found her. And um, we we've never found any remains from her, but... She's been gone since the end of uh, June. And we had search and rescue come, and um, what they did was camped out in our parking lot, and I took the Ethernet off the router, and it went across the library, out the out window into the, the window. parking lot to uh, go into their uh, van. van. And they used our services. And that's... You know, unfortunately, it didn't have the ending that we would like, but the library served as sort of the search and rescue headquarters or command headquarters for this, and they were using the high-speed broadband that the OUT project put into the library to coordinate that search. So um, it, it's really, I mean, those are the kind of things that really make us excited about what we can do now, which couldn't have happened a, a year ago. So... Um, that's, that's a great example of how the OWL project is having um, positive impact on the communities that we're working with. So, um, you know, and, and back to our slides, um, you know, off-road versus on-road, um, you know, 98% of our funding goes to off-road libraries uh, simply because I mean, that's the most expensive ones, and, and there's so many of them. And 
Um, you know, this is something that people, when, when we go to conferences, we talk to our federal reporting people down in Adam, Washington, D.C., they, I mean, it's a struggle for them to understand this because it's not that way where they live, and they've never been in a place where you can't access a community. I mean, you have to fly in or you have to snow machine or boat or something like that. There's no road to get to these communities, and there's no, you know, the only way you can put broadband in these communities is through satellite, which is really expensive. Thus, the cost is really high. So um, that's 98% of our funding uh, goes to off-road libraries. Um, library broadband installations. Um, this is where we said we had 67 libraries, and our numbers are going to be, here we have 69 identified because um, we had some others come in uh, since since then. So there are 69 libraries uh, with a target of 1.5 megabits of broadband. That's 1.5 up, 1.5 down, which um, I believe all of you except Kodiak has. Kodiak, you have a cable modem, which make, gives you a lot more bandwidth, and Kenai has a, has a cable modem as well. And then as of September 19th, 53 of the libraries have been completed, and now that's up to 60 or 61. Okay, um, our computer equipment. This is a picture of Juno, of uh, Jonas down in Juno receiving their OWL computers. Um, and we have put 147 desktops, that is higher than that now, 171 laptops, and we've completed 38 public computing centers which are now in operation. The pictures there are of, um, do you recognize uh, uh, Huna, um, Terry, Terry Budke and Huna is holding up a new pair of headphones that she got. And that's Sue, uh, Sheriff, Valerie Oliver, and Kay Thomas in the Cooper Landing Library where they're delivering their computer. So, um, the video conferencing, here's two pictures, one of Senator Begich and one of Senator Murkowski. Each one of them jumped on the, the OWL video conferencing network and read stories to children uh, from their office in Washington, D.C. Uh, Rango is in one picture and Juno is in the other picture. I know Kenai was involved in that. I'm not, I don't know if anybody else who was on was involved in that. But it was really cool for the senators and they did it live. Um, and, you know, they, they, Senator Murkowski is certainly a lot better storyteller than Senator Baggage was, but the kids didn't know the difference. Um, 60 video conferencing units uh, have been purchased. Um, that's higher now. We've ordered out of them. Uh, we, we've ordered the rest of them. Like I say, with the exception of the libraries in the Matsu Borough, um, 45 libraries are now in full functional operation with video conferencing. And you know, it, it's been you know when we when we put the video conferencing network out there. I was a little nervous um, about who was going to use it. Okay, if we um, if we build it, will will people come? Will people use it? And you know, I, I've been pleasantly surprised that this is happening. I mean, people are using this. Um, we've done 312 video conferences, a lot more than that now, probably 350 since. Uh, September 30th of 2011, so just over the last year, um, and excluding weekends, we're doing uh, about two a day, and some of the things that we're using them for are uh, job interviews, uh, there's been uh, some distance education courses taken over video conferencing, uh, a writer's workshop has been done. Um, you know, we, we've done video conferences from the Country Music Hall of Fame. We've done them from the Great Barrier Reef. We've done them from the Dinosaur Museum. We've done them from the Toledo Zoo. Um, so that lots and lots and lots of different types of video conferences are happening over this network. Um, I think uh, at least today this is our, our third or fourth one going over the system today. So uh, we're excited about the use of it. Um, and about the direction it's going and people are excited to use it and we hope that continues. Um, we have the, the CILC website that has lots and lots of content. I encourage you all 
to go uh, check that out, CILC.org, and see all of the content that is out there and available for you um, to use. So, and those of you that are coming here next week, you'll have a whole training session on CILC and the opportunity that it provides you. So, uh, the video conferencing network is up, it's running, it's taking off, it is being used. Um, it can be used more, but I am so, so happy with the use that we're getting out of it currently. So I'm, I'm glad for that. And, you know, a lot of thanks for that goes to uh, Matt, who should be on up in Fairbanks. Matt, are you still with us? I'm still here. All right. So Matt is our big brother, eye in the sky up in Fairbanks, making sure that everything is running properly um, with the video conferencing. Um, like I said, we, the, the other area of OWL is our OWL training, okay? and um, we've done several training events across the state. Uh, most of them have been here. We've done some at the ACLA conference. Uh, we have a trip planned to Barrow to go do some training, and say we have the big uh, training event here next week um, for our, our last one of these. It will be our fourth and final training event here. Uh, in Anchorage. Um, and, you know, the focus of our training is basic IT. You know, when, when you come up here next week, Ellie, you'll see that, uh, you know, you'll take apart a computer and learn the parts of the computer. You'll uh, get a lot of hands-on training with video conferencing. Some of the digital resources that are available for us, uh, we go over as well as like our webinar tool called eLive. Um, or Blackboard Collaborate, we do a session with that, so you're familiar with that when we do trainings uh, with that software. So uh, we, we really cover a whole lot of, of things when we do our training, a whole lot of aspects of our project. Um, so it's been really good. Uh, we've created 27 new jobs, actually that's 29 new jobs have been created as a result of Al, and each day that number is climbing the more IT aides we hire, you know, since we, we, you know, redid the eligibility requirements to hire an IT aide and made it open to everybody, um, those 27 jobs are probably up into more 35 or 40 now. So we're, we're excited about that. Um, and, and training is delivered like, like we're doing today via video conferencing. It's done face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, we've done some audio conference training. Um, and uh, we've also gone out and done some on-site training. And so, you know, we're delivering training in lots and lots of different ways uh, out to locations so people get the opportunity uh, to get um, an understanding of the project and the equipment the project is providing to you. Um, Kay Thomas, our library in Cooper Manning, uh, said this, and I, I really think this is appropriate. Um, this is the most incredible thing that has ever happened to our library since we got our first computer. I can't thank everyone involved. Your time, money, effort, dedication have created a network that must be sustained. Um, so uh, that's. Let's go back to me. Let me come back to me. Hold one moment. Let me switch back to oops to camera and get it back on me. Okay. Um, so that's I mean that's the the gist of our I mean, from a ten thousand foot level. That's I mean that's our project in a nutshell and you know with with each community and I know several of you have already done this but with each community we're asking that they do a community launch with their broadband and their library they have sort of an open house and bring uh, library patrons in maybe some city or government officials in so they can see the equipment they can see how it works they can get some hands-on stuff with it and really see and get a feel for what the library is doing for their community. We just had uh, Glenn Allen do theirs on Monday night, and it was really successful. A lot of people there, a big party, and we were able to join in via video conference 
to that community party. So, um, you know, if you if you haven't done that, we encourage you uh, to to throw together a little open house in your library and, and let us here in, in Anchorage and Juneau jump on and say hi to your library patrons and your library staff and and that kind of thing. So. Um, Is there, are there any questions to me about the OUT project, about any part of the OUT project, about anything that we're doing here in Anchorage that may uh, have an uh, effect on your library or your community? Hey, Olivia, have you used the CILC website at all? Uh, Ellie and Kodiak, no, I haven't used it yet. Okay. Um, has anybody on, on this call uh, gone on to CILC and seen the content and used any of it yet? Um, I have. Who was that? Libby and Hyder. Okay. And what, what, what was your call concluding? Actually, I'm just um, getting my list together of, of what I want to uh, present. Here in Hyder, this is the first time that we've had employment, so everybody's been busy, so I'm waiting until fall. <laughs> Good. Um, we got, a high, we got a, our streets paved. <laughs> yeah, it's the, <laughs> the little things in life, right, Libby? Um, and we even have well, stop signs big now. Big. <laughs> well, Ellie and Kodiak, do you know if, if the Kodiak Library has been on any CILC stuff? Uh, I've looked into the site, but we haven't uh, we haven't uh, dedicated it for, or found a program that we want to use yet. But we're looking to do that through the winter, and we're actually looking to uh, invite the homeschool group here in town to look at what that uh, site has to offer so that maybe they would want to use it. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's like perfect. You know, that there's so much content available out there and I just got a statement back. We still have, you know, $7,000 available through CILC of content. So don't hesitate to find something on that website that can, you know, you know, fill the needs of whether it's homeschool, whether it's, you know, I just got a call today with somebody that wants to do, you know, a couple of events, a couple puppet events, you know, for preschool kids. So, I mean, it, it's a great tool where kids can come in and have some fun with kids or whatever the case may be from other locations. And also, it gets, it gets our video conferencing unit being, our, our network used and uh, creates excellent uh, opportunities for for everybody to participate. So please use that CILC website. And I know, um, who, who is it that we have with us from Kenai again? I'm sorry. Diana. 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 Okay, and what, what are you a volunteer there? Are you part of the library staff? Yeah, I'm the library staff. Okay, and I understand um, Mary Jo is out this week, is that right? Yeah, she's at um, Jeremy. Or yeah, she's, at, she's coming up to, so I have to go down, so I'll see her tomorrow. Um, oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I know, you know, do you have any questions about the OUT project or what's going on with the Kenai Library? You know, it's been working out really well here. We haven't had any questions so far. So have you had people from your community come in and, and use the equipment and use that the OWL network and that kind of thing? Yeah, we've joined um, in Craig Library. It has a lot of cool programs, and we've joined them a couple times. And um, we've used it to do, like, TED Talks. Um, like brown bag lunch, people come okay. in and watch TED Talks, and that's actually been pretty popular. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very good. 
Um, see, and, and this is, you know, one, one thing that we're, we're seeing is, you know, with the 45 endpoints that we have in place, there's probably, you know, 30 of them that are using it quite often, but we still have a handful out there that aren't. So part of what we're trying to do is really educate and promote and teach and get people comfortable with, with the video conferencing network. It's, you know, it's really easy to use. Matt and Donna and the staff up in Fairbanks do all of the hard legwork, the behind the scenes stuff. All we have to do is basically just schedule a conference and show up at the time the conference is scheduled to, to air and all of the work is done. So um, as far as like an ease of use standpoint, uh, this network and video conferencing is really, really, I mean, UA Video Services makes it really easy on us to use this. So uh, we want to certainly take advantage of that. Um, uh, Celia, have, have, you, have you used the CILC website? I have searched through it. I used it to put together the article for our newspaper, and um, I've had a request to call in to look for a certain program, so I plan to do that this afternoon. All right. What programs are you looking for? They want a beginning business type of program, how to start a home okay. business, a cottage business. Okay. And there may be also, um, you know, if you go on the CISC website and you look at classes, there may be something along those lines that's offered as a class as well. So uh, certainly uh, when you go look at the website, take a look at that part of it too. I will do that. Okay. What about you, Dan and Gus, or in uh, Dillingham? Christopher, have you, have you guys participated in CILC stuff yet? We piggybacked on a couple of conferences, but that's all. And then looking at the website for content. Don't know what we're going to do quite yet. All right. So, but uh, I mean that's that's good. So uh, you 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 know other people have scheduled conferences and you were able to get in and that's that's as good as anything. So um, you know in, in looking at you know just kind of summarizing our conversation today. In looking at the OUT project, we came in with an objective, and that objective was to um, upgrade library facilities to make Alaska libraries uh, state-of-the-art libraries with new computer equipment, with high-speed broadband, with high-speed high -speed video conferencing. And, you know, we've had some issues, we've had some troubles, we've had some things, but we are, you know, what, what we've done is really what we set out to do. Um, in fact, uh, I, I was talking uh, with people today who want us to go down to the state of Washington and sort of tell them about what we've done up here because they want to pattern uh, a video conferencing network off of sort of the same thing that we've done up here and that we're continuing to do. So, you know, at first, like, what were we thinking? trying to do this, and now we got people trying to copy us. So I, I think, you know, you know well, what's that, that saying? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So if people are trying to copy us and do what we're doing, that means we've done something right. And a lot of the credit goes to the hardworking folks in the libraries, the people up in Fairbanks, certainly our staff here that work for us in the state library have, have been, um, you know, bulldogs and getting a lot of this stuff done and making this this project as successful as it has been to this point. So uh, we, over the next year, we can we look forward to continuing to grow the project, continue to work with all of you, and continuing to uh, uh, to build on the successes as we you know search for funds and search for money to keep keep what we've done sustainable and, and keep what we've done you know moving forward. So. Um, if there are no other questions for me, and the floor is open for questions, um, I, I look forward to seeing you, you, you next week, Ellie, and you know the rest of you on another video conference at some point. So, any other questions? Okay, you know it was a little shorter than we anticipated today. Uh, we have Shane, I have a question. 
Okay, who said that? that Ellie? Uh, Ellie, and, Ellie and Kodiak. Okay. I, I'm just looking at our signal here, and sometimes it's real digi digital, and I'm just wondering, is that a distance thing, or does that have to do with how many people are on at this time? Question two. Oh, Matt, you want to jump in on that one? Um, this is Donna, and uh, I think either Matt went to lunch or ran down the hallway for a moment. So okay, who, did who's you... having the pixelization? Who was it? Uh, that uh, was Kodiak. Kodiak? And are you on the GCI Gustavus network? Gustavus too. Yes, they are. Oh, they have Kodiak is on the GCI, yeah. yeah what well, there's a couple of different that... factors at work. So it depends on whether you're on satellite or landline, whether you're actually on fiber or not, and I don't know right off the top of my head. Without looking it up. Have, okay. Kodiak has a cable modem, so they're on a landline. Okay. We're running video conferencing at the lowest acceptable speed for video conferencing because of um, bandwidth constrictions. So you have 384 kilobits per second coming your way and then coming back again. So there is going to be a little bit of delay. There is going to be a little bit of pixelization. It just, you know, depends upon what kinds of information has to be transferred back and forth. Um, most of you have fairly busy rooms in the background. So um, we like to see a little bit of interest in the background, but if we can, we try to keep it down just a little bit. That makes it less hard on the mechanics of your video conferencing machine to help translate all those colors and designs and lines into video conferencing packets that it sends back and forth. It's pretty much not going to be cable TV quality because we don't have that kind of bandwidth available. Um, but we would like to say, you know, that it's great to see you all. It's great that it, it uh, connections happen and We've had some really wonderful video conferences with some of the CILC providers that we've um, attracted in this, this area. The one we had this morning was with, um, who was the endpoint this morning with the kids? Um, we had Philadelphia Arts Center oh, and uh, a room full of kindergartners and first graders who could barely sit still. And it was hilarious to watch those kids interact with the art museum. It was great. Thanks, Donna. Uh, one thing that, that I can add to what she said is I think it's important from a library standpoint that you know you, you sort of set expectations. Um, you know the, the the video is good. I mean it's a lot, but it's not high def. It will never be high def. You will you will get that pixelization every once in a while when the video refreshes, when packets are being sent, um, and it will be distorted from time to time. And so if somebody is coming into your library and they're expecting to sit down and see, you know, this high def uh, video coming across, then, you know, that's not going to happen. And we don't want them to come in and be disappointed that, oh, it's not what I thought it was. So it's important that libraries set the expectations um, uh, like Donna said, we're running this at 384K because you know 1.5 bandwidth is not screaming fast. It's considered high speed, but you know for 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 our purposes, this works perfectly fine. Um, and you know, I, I know that you know you're, you're used to looking at TV and, and all these things, but you know for for video conferencing and what we do. Um, this is as good as we can get it right now. We can certainly maybe get it better in the future, uh, but for now, this is what we got, and it certainly works and exceeds uh, our needs. So uh, that was a great question, Ellie, and uh, we'll talk more about that when you're up here with us next week. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Thanks. <laughs> any, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you for uh, taking an hour out of your time this afternoon and joining me on this. And uh, 
you know, I'll, hopefully I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Hello. Um, Shane. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. We've been cutting in and out, and Matt asked me to do a speed test, so I did, and I sent it to you. So be looking for that email. Okay, what was what was your speed? It was like seventy point seventy five. You can't smell me. You're better than Gus Davis. I sent you a speed test too. This is Sylvia and Gustavus. Okay. Um, Chris, if you know, also you know, I'll, I'll take your speed test and I'll, I'll do this as well. But I want you to call the GCI customer service number. I believe you have it. It's that eight five five number. Yeah, Let them know that your speeds are you dropped out of the video conference a couple times and that your speeds are uh, lower than the one point five. Who do you want me to tell that to? Uh, it's the GCI customer service uh, people. They have an OWL customer service. Um, in there, it's a one eight. It's an eight hundred number. It's one eight five five. Hold on, stay right there, and I'll go get it for you. You got something to write with? I've got down too, so you can do it. Yeah, I'll go get that number for all of you. Hold on, please. Okay, uh, Chris, and the rest of you might want to write this number down too. Um, it's the GCI customer service support, and this number is specifically for OWL. It's uh, 1-855-770-3076. Shane, should Gustavus call GCI as well? Yeah, I mean, if you're um, if you're having issues, yes. Um, anytime right. you're I think we cut out three are... times. Okay, yes, Gus Davis, Sylvia, are you are you still there? Yes. Okay, yeah. Still are. Um, yeah, if you want to call GCI and let them know that you're having bandwidth problems um, as well, then they'll do a trouble ticket and try to figure that out for you. All right, that'd be great. Okay, you got that number, Sylvia? Yes, I got the number. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again. Um, and uh, I, I look forward Shane. to seeing you all soon. Shane? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I see that this is being recorded. Where can we watch it again? Since we missed the majority of it. Matt? Yes. Um, yeah, they want, they want to be able to see the recording. I will uh, send you a link, Shane, and you can forward it out to everybody. Okay. So what, after it's recorded, um, he'll send me a link to it, and then I'll send it down to you, Chris. Okay. And um, can we also get your PowerPoint with that? Yeah, I mean, that will be, I, I can attach the PowerPoint to that email also. Can we use it for our um, OWL launch thing? Looks like good yeah, information. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You can do whatever you want with it, for sure. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Hey, Ellie, are you flying or driving? Oh, I guess you're in Kodiak. You're you're probably flying. I'm gonna fly. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thanks everybody again today. I apologize for the those of you that dropped out, um, but uh, we'll send the link out to the recorded uh, version of this, and um, you should be able to access it that way.
Thank you again, and I'll see you all later. Thanks, Donna and Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Shane.